I'm John. I play guitar for Super Touch. Uh, my name's Joe. I play bass for Super Touch. I'm Andy. I play drums for Super Touch. I'm Mark. I sing for the group Super Touch. <laughs> We're Super Touch. They have energy. You know, like, they're, they're strong, like live. Like, I like them better live than I do, like, on the album. But um, I like their music. And uh, especially the music, more over their lyrics, I guess. I don't know. They're, they're different from other hardcore bands in the scene. The main reason I like them is because they're a lot different from uh, the other bands. You know, they have. Well, the only other bands just play kind of the same music and all, but Super Touch has a lot of different styles. Yeah, their sounds really good. But, uh, I was just like more taking pictures tonight, so I wasn't like down there. I think they're boring. I mean, I think they're nice people. Don't get me wrong. They're probably going to watch this and say, gee, that Mike Wilson, what he's saying about us. I mean, I, they're nice people. I just don't get into their music. Um, I've, I, see, I know I've seen them before, but I think every time I've seen them, I've been real drunk and I don't really remember them. <laughs> Super Touch when I saw an ad in um, the Village Voice it said uh, bass player wanted and I had heard of the band so you know I gave uh, Andy the drummer a call and um, you know uh, I was the first guy who called and we practiced it sounded good and you know I got in the band it's pretty simple I met Mark when we went to high school together um, and he was in Death Before Dishonor at that time and when that band 
DVD had broken up. Uh, it, t- it took a little while, but we we got together and we had other members at the time. We didn't have Andy at that time, and it just just grew into the, the lineup we have now. And we called it DVD when we were together still, but it wasn't. It was super touch. I was in another band before that, and they broke up, and I was trying to get a new band together. And I was friends with John in high school, and um, we started playing together with a couple other people who were temporary. And then um, I saw Andy playing in another band, and I um, that band broke up, and I asked Andy if he wanted to play with us. And then we had another temporary bass player, and then we. Um, went through a string of temporary bass players and found um, Joe through the Village Voice. He gave us a call, we put in the man. I think they're going to make it like bigger than some bands already that are out there. The song is about the third digit and then let in the number alphabet. <laughs> Bunch vocals, um, he, they're shit on the seven inch. Yeah, they're they're kind of weak on the seven inch, but I, I I like them. They're not they're it's different, you know, say just screaming into the microphone like a lot of bands do. But you know, I'm not at the stage where I'd like to be vocally, but you know it'll do for now. But I, you know I keep getting better and better month by month. You know I think a lot about what I'm singing and think of ways to improve my vocals and think of things and I think of things that um that mess me up when I'm singing, you know, and what to do that you know, like my bad habits and stuff like <laughs>
get along we get along well as people when we're not hanging out as a band and when we start to like Mark and I can get along fine we can hang out and as soon as we start talking about band stuff it's just a fight <laughs> and it's, it's like it always happens you know because he's real sensitive and it's easy to offend him and I mean I'm the same way kind of not as bad as him so anyway, I don't know he's always nice to end up in an argument <laughs> when we talk about band stuff but for the most part we can hang out together and have fun all the we're, we're really good friends. You know, we have our little fights and stuff. I mean, on tour, we almost broke up a couple of times. But, um, you know, we're, we're friends. We don't really hang out together that much, you know, in uh, non-band activities. We're semi-tight, you know. I mean, you know, we're all pretty good friends. We don't hang out too much. Because, I know, you know, you know, if we hang out too much, you know, we don't want to cause anything that would make conflict with the band, you know. If we hung out too much, we argue more. You know, it's like a stre it's a pretty stressful situation, you know. Like, you know, so we just, we basically hang out at rehearsals. I mean, we play a lot of shows and take, like, 10-hour rides. <laughs> Sounds good to us. Rock and roll. I mean, music ready for all of these bars from other genres. I mean, I mean, hardcore always borrowed from like the early punk and from the '70s punk and '70s punk borrowed from '60s punk, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So it, it, people are going to be redefining and reevaluating old old styles and incorporating it into the, the new styles. Um, I just hope we can have a lot more um, people thinking again about. Um, Creating, creating something different, something challenging, like like in the like in the early 80s. And I'd say I've been around the hardcore scene since I was on 14 years old. I'm 20 now, we're 21 in August, and um, it's definitely changed over the years, definitely. Because um, back then, you know, hardcore is good because it's an American started movement, you know. It's like you know, some of the kids started up, you know, just to have fun, just to pass the time. It started out on the ground, but now I, I'd say today it's like kind of like a fad to be the hardcore, you know, it's, it's lost its touch, I'd right, say. So. Um, and also there are now a lot of different factions involved. They're 15 years old, they don't know what they're talking about, they show up for the straight edge band. If the band has bald hair, they show up. They don't show up for any of the good bands. Sorry, Social D is playing next weekend, next Thursday, right? Mm -hmm. Social Distortion, they've been around since 79. They're a great heart, like punk rock band, they've been around forever, they're wonderful. Any of these people will be there? No, they show up for like, Oh, you're bald. I'll show up. You know. I don't like it. Downhill. It's gone downhill. It's become really commercialized and trendy. It's like a fad. No, no, no. It's not. not. I don't know. For me, it was like it used to be like being disillusioned and angry, and there's a lot of energy with it. Now it's just like it's just another fad for kids.
supposed to be like four guys jamming, lay down your tracks and go. Nowadays, it's like, oh, let's put this track on, let's overdub this. It's too, it's too much music, just be simple, you know? Hardcore should not be about getting $800 guarantees and three, three packs of beer, which certain formerly underground hardcore bands used to play CBGBs, you know, at smaller shows now get. We really don't think about it. We just, just play whatever, you know, be right. We really don't think about what style of music we're playing. We just play and, you know, we hope people like it. And if they don't, you know, we can't really be concerned, you know. We just have to play what we like. The bands coming out now, which are trying to sort of go back to the old image of what, you know, we hold in our minds. There are bands now like Born Against and Citizens Rest. These are bands that have good lyrics, good music, and they're just out there to have fun and you know, do it what it's, you know, the original idea of it was, not to get onto a big label and get yeah. this huge audience. The know? old scene is dead. What keeps us around is there's still a little spark of life left in it. There's still a little bit of that purity and that energy and that anger and frustration. It's sort of like it's still there. there. It's not. It's a fad for most of the kids nowadays, but for some of them, like I get out there, and like 90% of the crowd that's at our shows, they're all completely pretentious. However, those couple that are really into it and are really listening to what's going on, and it's it's really important to them. I mean, you could ask 100 people here what hardcore means to them, and they'll give you a different, different answer. answer. But whatever it means to them as an individual, it's got to be everything. <laughs> negative publicity about them. I feel like it's still like you can be in a group of people and someone will bring it up and not everyone there will be like, oh, that's totally Yeah. You know? Like in there should be more, there should be more like people saying racism, like instead of not saying anything. Again. You know, I, I find a lot of people don't speak out about it. Yeah, some friends of mine in New York were part of like Sharp Skins and it used to be like a big movement and now there's like three people who are still really into it. I think people it. are kind of giving up. You know, I mean, Sharp Skins has kind of died down and things have gotten kind of bad in New York, but no one, you know, the whole thing with Sharp Skins, it got to be where, you know, they were being violent themselves, you know, so a lot of people dropped out of it because it was like a double-edged sword. It's like if you wore the Sharp Skins patch, you could get beat up by someone who'd gotten beat up by another Sharp Skin. If you didn't wear the Sharp Skin patch, people thought you were racist because you had a shaved head. Mm -hmm. So a lot of people are really frustrated. You know, friends of mine in New York are find themselves really frustrated with the scene because it seems like there's no way that you can, like, you know, there's no, you know, there's no way to win. I think down south it's probably going to be more of a problem. I've been hearing that there's been a growing Nazi skinhead movement there, but there's so much hype going on with this Nazi skinhead stuff. I'm, I'm pretty hesitant to say anything is true about it. I myself, I'm a skinhead. I'm the first skinhead to a black. West Indies, so there's no problem. People try to, you know, play it off like, you know, oh, you can't be in this because you're black and this and that. There are very few people who do it. Those are usually the ones who are racist. 
called fake skinheads, and uh, they're usually beat down to the ground. They're not accepted. Now, there are bands who are, the white power bands aren't even allowed to play, you know, around New York. They have to play, like, invitational gigs in warehouses. They stop, yeah, stop eliminate fighting at shows. That's a big problem, because there was a club in Philly that uh, was open. It was a really cool club, and then all these, like, the Nazi skinheads came, and they <laughs> fucked it all up. Well, there was one time in Philly when there was a lot of uh, white power skinheads, and, and um, my singer, Mark, basically, you know, told him to fuck off. I mean, he shouldn't, he, he shouldn't use language like that, which he shouldn't. You should try to reason with him before you say, I'll kick your ass, or something like that. But uh, they got a little uptight, and, you know, the police had to be called, and supposedly they were waiting outside for us, but nothing happened from that. And I just got kind of upset, you know, that there was kids there with swastikas and, you know, white power symbols and stuff on their jackets. So I just started singing stuff and for a song about, you know, them and, you know, why I don't like them and stuff like that. And then after the show, you know, well, whatever, 40 of them or so were waiting out front for me, you know, wanting to kick my ass or whatever. Got into it and I didn't know that there was any sort of political uh, the beliefs that went along with it, and I was into it for a long time, just, you know, kid with a, you know, I was just a skinhead, it's like, oh, I thought it was something that, you know, was purely for hardcore music, and I started hanging out with people that, you know, were really into the politics of it, and I started learning about that, and trying to be, you know, trying to fit into that group, saying a lot of things I didn't really believe in, whatever, did that for a while, and then gave up on it, realized how pathetic it was. The skinhead is just, you shave your head and you wear a certain type of jacket, I mean, I, that, that really doesn't matter, that's just a fashion thing, I mean, it depends upon what your beliefs are, I mean, if you're like, like a heavy nationalist guy or, you know, a racist or something like that, then it could, you know, become a problem, but, I mean, I have no problem with people looking like, you know, a skinhead, there's nothing wrong with Yeah, man, I'm bleeding. Oh, what? Anyway. Oh, I know, I head about five I'm times. just, all of a sudden I'm on the floor and there's people on my hands, I'm like, ah! That's why there's people there to pick you up. Yeah, when no one's picking me up, they're fucking standing on my hand. I don't know. I'm gonna come back to me. That's what all those chilling and choking on my one. Yeah, I'm gonna have to play it on my hand. You're slowly doing it. Breaking my hand. Basically, the people who go to shows, I mean, reflect all different types of attitudes. So, um, you know, there's people who just want to dance hard and get violent, and, you know, they end up hurting other people. And there's people who just come to enjoy the show, and there's people who actually, you know, want to be, uh, you know, it's, at, at its best, I think, like, a show could be an exchange of ideas, you know, and you could, like, you know, learn a lot from it. A lot of kids that are into hardcore, too, are one-track minded, you know, and a lot aren't, you know. It's like, it's a weird scene, you know, you, you meet some of the coolest people you've ever met in your life, and you also meet some of the biggest jerks you ever met in your life, too, you know. But, well, you know, everybody has their own opinion on what hardcore is, you know. And I guess they're entitled, everybody's entitled to their own opinion. But the way I look at it now, I just think of music. You know? Yeah, you could do your actions, because, you know, yeah. sometimes you hit harder than others. Yeah, maybe yeah. a little bit more. Well, I was trying to figure out what you were doing. I just write, you know, I always write, it's just something I do, write down my thoughts, and then, when, you know, when we come up with new music, try to work, you know, what I've written into the songs. I mean, you know that it, what you play will be there for life. I mean, a demo tape not too many people will get. So, um, you know, it, it could be, you know, things could get pretty tense. I mean, if you're trying to do something and you can't really get it, 
and you know you could just sort of psych yourself out but I mean at its best I think you could have a good time you know recording as long as you don't psych yourself out that's something that happened to me and that's something that happens to Mark too so well I first started playing when I was nine I started playing in bands when I was about 12 I used to play drums in a hardcore band. I didn't play very good, but that was about it. Nothing else. Music is freedom, I, I would hope. I mean, if, unless you're just playing, you know, to get your record deal and get famous, which a lot of bands are. I mean, we're not. You know, of course, I'd love to get famous. I'd love to play the Garden. Actually, no, the Garden's too big. I'd like to play, like, the Ritz and stuff. That size is cool. The garden would be a little bit overwhelming, but anyway, I mean, I'd like to get really big. I'd like to get a major record deal, as long as you know they're not screwing us. I would love to get really famous and have money and like have people digging the music I was playing and you know people respecting me because of it. I know, sorry about the past two weekends. No, not my fault. Yeah, I know. Well, you know, super touch is here. I don't know what to do. I can't tell you. I... Did that broke up? Ah, so, Todd left the van, he's back with Murphy's Law. Of course, they didn't tell me. I'm supposed to play in about an hour. Oh, yeah. We got... Super drunk. Oh, we got coming up in two weeks. You guys like Citizens Arrest? So anyway, at the end of the last Sunday in July, right here, we've got channel shows coming up. And the channel hardcore shows return. No fights. I think that in the hardcore scene, you're getting, you know, you get a lot of uh, kids in puberty with their testosterone levels running wild, and you know they're all trying to show who can dance harder, and so of course there are going to be more fights. I think there are probably more fights at hardcore shows than at metal shows, but there are plenty at metal shows. I mean, you get, you know, big dudes getting drunk and stuff, and you know, with oh my woman, you looked at her, and you know things like that. It's not like like. Uh it's vicious, anarchy, you know, the stuff you see on, like, California punk movies or whatever. Like, around here, I don't think, like, the whole dancing, like, that kind of stuff, I don't know, it's kind of gotten big, you know, a lot of kids aren't going to just, like, slam and run into people. It's more of, like, dancing, creating their own thing. It's just because the music is so overpowering that it just makes you, you know, you gotta know when you gotta know it. You can't be uh, you know, naive about it either. You can't be like going to go into the middle and start dancing around and just expect something's gonna happen to you. You, know, you can't. You gotta, you gotta know when to stop. I've seen people get their noses punched in and you know whatnot, and their faces smashed. I mean, it's it's terrible. It's ridiculous. You gotta be you know careful with that. If you're going to dance violently, you know, make sure you're not gonna hurt somebody else. Hang out with your friends. Forget about all that other shit during the week, you know, and just come here and hang out with your friends, see all your old friends. So, you know, don't, you know, if you have fights, you're gonna stop the shows. And we're just gonna be fucking, we're just gonna all, like, grow old and start working and, you know, just work, work, work. No place to hang out with your friends. Judas Priest and ACDC, you know, if there wasn't those bands, there wouldn't be hardcore, there wouldn't be heavy metal, there wouldn't have been like a, a new wave of British heavy metal in the 80s, you know? <laughs> I support Amnesty, you know, I think uh, it's a great cause, I mean, it's, 
it's you know it's basically uh, it's it's not involved with politics. It's just for you know human rights. And um, we've done benefits for Amnesty before, and hopefully we'll do them again. I mean, we're in a band, so I mean, you know, I think we should use whatever influence we have from being in a band, you know, to uh, further good causes like Amnesty. <laughs> Damn, my camera's battery is dead. You gotta get up while we're leaving. We gotta pack the van. <laughs> um, I don't think hardcore is underground now. I think that, you know, so many people know about it. Now it's like... It's, for a few years now, it's been like hip. If you knew what hardcore was, you're a very hip person. <laughs> that was some good footage. I like hardcore music, you know. And it, I mean, it's been such a big part of my life, you know. I've been listening to it since, you know, it started. You know, since I was a little kid, you know. And the influence is there, but we're, you know, we're just, I think of Super Touch as a band, not any type of band. Like I said before, we just play whatever comes out at rehearsal.